Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to my YouTube channel and quite a light-hearted video we have here. It is about the Concorde. Probably you heard about the Concorde before. It is one of the most amazing aircraft, passenger air aircraft in the world. The one that flew supersonic. So I just want to watch this video with you guys. I'm just going to put it here on the screen. It's um, New York to London Heathrow in the summer of 2003. So we're basically looking at a piece of history and I'm really excited about this. Let's get things rolling. That's sweet. Look at the style of the video. So that's the cockpit. Let me just take a look. So, wow, this cockpit is quite crammed. So nowadays we have, you know, in commercial airliners, we have a way bigger cockpit, you know, a bigger workspace, basically. But yeah, those guys look quite happy. I see a control panel here on the right. So I think that's for the second officer, if I'm not mistaken. Cool. Quite a quick flight time today, three hours and 15 minutes. And by the end of our supersonic cruise... Three hours and 15 minutes from London to New York, uh, or rather from New York to London. But that's crazy because I think the flight time nowadays is like seven hours, six or seven hours. Crazy, crazy, crazy. As I said, I'll speak to you later. Let's enjoy the unique Concorde. Quickly tell you a little bit about the uh, Concorde takeoff. We have a unique system on this aircraft. We use afterburners for takeoff. Imagine you're just going on the runway, right? And the, the pilot uh, starts speaking about using afterburners just out of nowhere. <laughs> Imagine if you're not a geek and you don't really know what the heck is that. Well, that's so that's so cool, actually. You'll know the afterburners are switched in because you may find there uh, may uh, smell a, a slightly sort of uh, kerosene fumey smell. That is quite normal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but it's. Like it, it's it's really cool. Like the captain's like, yeah, you might you might smell some kerosene, just a little bit. That's but you know it's it's awesome. That gives us an extra twenty percent of thrust. It does create an awful lot of noise though. So we yeah. do two things off this runway. The first thing we're going to do is that as soon as we're airborne, we're going to make quite a sharp turn to the left to avoid built-up areas. And the second thing we're going to do is switch the afterburners off. So don't be alarmed by that sharp left turn. All the quite marked noise reduction soon after takeoff. That is normal Concorde procedure off this runway. And we fly around the edge of Jamaica Bay. And as soon as we're clear of the coast, we're open throttles again, right open, and uh, off we climb and accelerate. Next. That's that's the way he expresses himself is so on point. And he he describes every part of the journey, every part of the taxiway. Hey, we're gonna take this sharp turn. Hey, we're gonna go this and do that and use the afterburners and so on and so forth. So. He's very interested in offering a great experience to the passengers. And you don't see that nowadays. Like nowadays, many times the, the pilots, they do quite a quick uh, summary of, you know, hey, we're going to start our descent into this city and the weather is good and I wish you all a good flight. But this guy right here in the Concorde, like he's a form of entertainment. Obviously, back then there were no screens on the on the back of the seats right you had no in-flight entertainment so the pilots is part of the entertainment because he provides details to all the passengers about what's happening with this flight so that's really cool actually yeah we use your afterburners when we want to go supersonic we need a bit of extra urge to get us through the uh, sound barrier and uh, we switch them on in pairs so not to uh, upset your champagne glasses that's so cool. <laughs> he doesn't want to upset their champagne glasses. That's that's really cool. Like this guy is amazing. Supersonic passing through Mark One, the speed of sound at about thirty thousand feet. Speed of sound. As long as we're not held down. Over one thousand kilometers, if I'm not mistaken. About ten minutes after takeoff. When we're doing about one and a half times the speed of sound, we don't need the afterburners anymore. This airplane can super cruise. It's the only aircraft at the moment that can do that. Yeah. Maintain supersonic flight without the use of afterburners. All the other supersonic aircraft, military, have to use afterburners continuously. This airplane doesn't. And uh, that's the secret of Concorde because we carry a high payload a long way. And we reach Mark 2 twice the speed of sound at 50,000 feet. Oh, yeah, they carry a lot of fuel as well. 
because they burn so much. Fastest speed of sound equates to about 1,350 miles an hour, which is considerably faster than a rifle bullet. Takeoff time. And if I'm not mistaken, takeoffs were so fast as well, and they had to be. The plane was quite heavy because of the, the fuel and uh, they need increased power. Descend as well, uh, when you descend as well, you descend rapidly, you descend fast. It's just the way the Concorde is, it's not like a normal airliner. And we have takeoff, oh yeah, nice. Yeah, quite a shaky video, but uh, you know, it's like a piece of history, That's it's so cool. And you know what, the video is actually not bad at all, the colors, like... Probably the, the person filming had a really good good gear for that time. The video quality is actually very, very decent. Very decent. So this is the flight from New York, so that's that's Manhattan, I think. Right, you can see some, uh, some land over there. New York. And this camera that he had, zoom as well, amazing. I'll show you about 2,000 feet lower than we actually are for some reason. So at 2,000 feet to uh, what the sprinters can all tell you. It's about to switch, the afterburn is on again. As I said, we're going to switch them on in pairs. You may feel the airplane give two very small lurches as they fire up. So they're flying at 23,000 feet and it's already 0.91 Mach. So it's basically close to the speed of sound already at 23,000 feet. So that's that's amazing. And look at this look at this thing. So they don't have in-flight entertainment, but but in the back of the cockpit, right, in the bulkheads, you see those uh, screens, right? One is so shows the speed, one is shows the the distance, right? How many feet you you're in the air, temperature and miles per hour. So that's really, really cool. So basically that was your entertainment back then. Uh, this is how you entertain yourself. You just look at the data of the flight. And I think for a person that's quite passionate about aviation, that will be amazing, really. Yeah. Okay, we're about to switch them on down. Supersonic! Yay! I wonder what was the Concorde top speed, I'm, I'm not really sure. And I think also they flew quite high. Like they're going higher and higher uh, than a normal airliner. This is a piece of history right here. Oh, meal is served. Champagne glass. Champagne glass, ladies and gents. I think they're they, uh, reaching cruising altitude, if I'm not mistaken. You can see they're quite high in the sky. And I think the purse... Forty-seven thousand feet. Forty-eight thousand feet. Mach 2.0. Damn. That's crazy. Look at the food, right? Let's let's look at the catering a little bit. Okay, so it looks quite decent. So you have a glass of champagne up here. You have some caviar on the left hand side, right? You have three glasses here, so I assume they will they're either one is with water and the other ones maybe juices or pouring some wine or something else. A uh, plastic cutlery, I thought it's gonna be metal. Because for example, in, in Etihad we have metal cutlery even on sectors in economy so it really depends i guess you have some sort of a pancakes on the left hand side and this looks like is this an omelet here with spinach i'm not sure i'm not sure but it looks good you know it looks kind of fancy he's trying to film the upper edge of the the sky like he tries to make it like we're in space. Oh, sorry, that, so that before, that was just the appetizer, right? That was just the starter. Now we're having the main course. 
and here we have a plate of chicken with some uh, some veggies, right? And look, look at the salt and pepper. They look so fancy. Those look fancy. I just don't like the plastic cutlery thingy. It's it's just a bit, uh, you know, for a Concorde flight, you know. But I guess after 2001, when uh, the incident happened with uh, the Twin Towers, I guess they tried to be as safe as possible on the flight as well. Metal cutlery were, was not really a thing, right? Because it can inherently mean there might be something dangerous uh, about it, right? For hijackers and stuff. You know, it was 2003, so just two years after 9-11. I totally understand that. I'm thinking that might be one of the reasons, but I'm not sure. Don't take my word for granted. Um, cool. Well, they have a lot of food, actually. We're at what? 53,000 feet. 53,000 feet. Degrees outside. Crazy. And the window is really hot to the touch. You can't almost keep your hand on it. Okay, still That's crazy. Look at the plane. So the plane itself, the Concorde, was not not very big. It was quite a small, narrow aircraft, like an Airbus A220 or a 320, but just narrower because it was like a, it was like a bullet through the sky. You know, it had to be narrow. But uh, yeah, what he was talking about here about the window. Yeah, so he was touching the window on Concorde because they're flying supersonic. Uh, the window is warm to the touch is like hot because of the speed that they're going the fuselage the fuselage of the aircraft they get gets quite hot so yeah that's that's amazing that's really cool they're flying 55,000 feet 55,000 feet most airliners today have a maximum of what 44 right something like that 44 45 that's kind of the upper edge Right, they can push it sometimes a bit more, but it's it's risky. So this this one goes up to, to so this one goes to 55 feet, Mach 2.0. Crazy, crazy, crazy. That's some really cool footage right there. You can see the stewardess right on the aisle, just giving uh, the food to the passengers. And then you can see, I think the cockpit door is open. I'm not sure though. Is that a cockpit door? No. Anyway. Well, we've slowed down back below supersonic. Now they're going, uh, they're going to land soon. Can already see the view. This guy has a very good camera for 2003. Like seriously, guys, that's a that's a brilliant camera for 2003. I could you can actually see stuff and he can actually zoom and everything. I wonder what he was using. Maybe a camcorder, but good. Oh, I recognize London. That is London. I see kind of the same view when we landing uh, in London. Yeah. such an important piece of history like yeah all right and now they are landing oh i can see some uh, british airways uh, boeing 747 over there quite a lot of them actually i think i saw four five that's a south african maybe south african boeing hmm anyway and touchdown, and you can see it's quite speedy, like uh, the aircraft speed is still a bit high, higher than normal airliners when uh, when they go, when they land, right? I wish you were safe and pleasant upward journey, and thank you for choosing the British Airways Concorde. Thank you and good evening. And we'll be on the stand a uh, good 15 minutes ahead of schedule, even allowing for that. Uh, Flying around in circles a bit. Hope you all had a, a pleasant flight and enjoyed the Concord experience. I always do whenever I fly this airplane. So. The pilot is so excited to fly this airplane. The pilot is like, 
I hope you enjoyed flying with Concord. I sure always do. Like he's he's amazing, man. He's really passionate about aviation. Like you can feel it. You can just feel it, and uh, and that's amazing because that translates to a pleasant experience for the passengers. And yeah, of course, they don't have the luxuries of today's planes and uh, IFEs and headphones and everything. But you know, um, the flight was three hours, three hours something. So. That, that was plenty of entertainment for that flight, to be honest. I would love to be on one of those flights back in the day. Great machine to, uh, to operate. And it's a sobering thought to think the next time you might see it or be inside it, it will be in the museum. Anyway, we'll hope to uh, fly you again soon, even if it's on a jumbo. Thank you. He said, next time you will see this airplane, it will be in a museum. So this was 2003. And if I'm not mistaken, I think 2003 was the same year that Concorde was uh, was let go. Basically, let me just check this actually. Concorde last flight. Okay, so November 26, 2003. And this flight, this flight was in the summer actually. So, yeah, basically this pilot knew that, okay, so this is probably the last time you guys will fly with Concorde because Concorde will no longer fly since 2003. That's, that's crazy. Uh, one of the reasons was the price per passenger was just so high and uh, it, was, it was burning so much fuel and also they had noise complaints at airports because Concorde was quite a noisy plane. And also there was one major accident uh, involving Concorde, I think 2001 or 2003, one of them. Concorde accident 2000. Oh yeah, on uh, July, yeah, 2000. So three years prior, there was, there was an accident, right? Involving Concorde and it was quite a sad one. And I think that was one of the reasons, along with the ones mentioned, that um, they finished the Concorde program after quite a few years. And, you know, people were very excited to fly this plane and uh, it was very fast. They can get you to a from A to B in a very fast manner, in a very fast time, I'm, I mean. So, yeah. One of the things I really appreciate about this video is how eloquent were the, the people, you know, um, the pilot was expressing himself so well. You don't see this nowadays. Also, the flight attendant, you know, the way they speak. And whenever I see all their videos, I'm always fascinated by the way uh, uh, people are so eloquent. Um, they seem to be very smart. Let me know, ladies and gents, if you enjoyed this video. Just a bit of a reaction to an old gold plane, the Concorde. I, was it the king of the skies, the queen of the skies, no. It's just the fastest thing in the skies, basically. <laughs> as fast as a passenger aircraft can go. Uh, I really wonder if we will uh, gonna go back to a supersonic uh, passenger flight. Uh, they, there have been rumors about it, but uh, I digress. Thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, and until the next time, see you guys. Bye-bye.